You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Hemlock Grove After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Hemlock Grove After Show. Oh yeah. Feeling this today. I'm, dig <laughs> I'm digging this song. Bing is for doing, and here we are doing another amazing After Buzz TV after show for your favorite show and our favorite show, Hemlock Grove. Yeah. I am your yeah. host, Sean O, and I'm joined here by four beautiful women in the studio with me <laughs> today. Let's start over here to my right. Hello everyone, I'm Marissa Serafini. Hey guys, I'm Tiana Hobson. Hi, I'm Fran Tingley. Hi. Oh. <laughs> is her mic on? I don't think so. Yeah, you really did that to me on purpose, didn't you, Stephen? Thanks a lot. Yes, yeah, there's a little. And as you guys may have heard, we are joined in studio with Freya Tingley, who is playing Christina on Hemlock Grove. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Yay. for joining us. Thanks for having me. Woo. So, so excited. We're going to be talking so much about your character, Christina, because you had mm -hmm. a big scene in this episode. Oh, by the way, we're doing, I don't know if I said it, we're doing season one, episode six, The Crucible. And you have a really big role in this episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah. we're, we're so glad you're here. It's perfect timing. Uh-huh, it is. Anyway, the topics we're going to be talking about today are Olivia visits the steel mill, jealousy amongst many of the characters, Christina ravages her date. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be discussing what happened in the library with, with Olivia, I take it, and, and the yeah. other characters, too. Okay. And we'll also be uh, talking about Francis and Norman's conversation. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So Olivia visits uh, the old steel mill. Why? It's, like, super suspicious at first. Like, she goes in there, and there's, like, there's a big ellipse, right? Mm -hmm. She goes mm -hmm. in there. It, it kind of pans around, like, helicopter view, bird's eye view of the steel mill almost, comes back, and she's walking out now, and she throws up. What do you guys think she threw up? That was nasty. That was mm -hmm. chunky yeah. red, <laughs> red <laughs> vomit. I have no idea what that was, but the fact that she licks it afterwards, mm -hmm. which shows her character also has a thing for blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I instantly thought of Roman with the blood thing mm -hmm. as soon as she did that. Still don't know what they are, <laughs> but it made me think. Okay, I don't know what their thing is with blood, but not only was it blood, it was also throw up blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so like it's one thing to just lick your own blood, but that's mixed in with vomit, so that makes it mm -hmm. extra gross and just and, and a lot of chunks. Yeah. So I felt like she really <laughs> liked whatever she ate the first time, and she wanted another little taste of it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, Christina, did you work a lot with Famke Johnson while you were on set? I had one scene, and that was the scene in the library where she's staring me down. Okay. It's my yeah. one scene with her, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And that was a really short yeah. little moment, too. Very short. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Um, and <laughs> I wanted to mention your accent because you do <laughs> such a great American accent Thanks. on the yeah. show, and I, di I didn't even know... Well, I didn't even have any inkling until I watched you in in this movie X yeah. that I watched earlier today, uh -huh. and I was like, okay, it's an Australian movie. She's probably an Aussie. Are you an Aussie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the whole entire time that I was doing Hemlock Grove, I was doing the accent 24/7. I even talk in my sleep, and I would be talking in my sleep in an American accent. <laughs> nice. so, yeah. So what kind of what kind of research did you have to go into? getting that American accent down. Um, I think Australians seem to have an ear for accents. I think it's because of the TV that we watch, you know, it's all either American or English, and maybe a little bit of s Australian TV. Um, and basically, I'd done some dialect coaching some years before, and basically it was just for me, doing it 24-7 helped. Right on. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, it, it sounds like you even go like in and out of your accent. Like it's oh, sometimes, really? yeah, sometimes <laughs> it sounds like you're straight up just, yeah. you're, from, you're American and mm -hmm. you got, you know, just like a perfect accent from here. But then sometimes it kind of fades into your Aussie accent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's just that thing of speaking it 24-7 and then going back into Australian. I have to remember, okay, I've got to do Australian now. Wait, how do I speak Australian? <laughs> <laughs> Turn it on and off like a switch. Yeah. Which is another interesting thing because a lot of these actors on, on this cast, they're all international. They have mm -hmm. thick accents. They're Swedish, there's Australian. There's Canadians. And, and there's, Canadian, yeah. there's Scottish. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I find it interesting how you can hear the characters or the actors kind of slip their accent a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all kind of in the same boat, literally. <laughs> 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 um, in that we all had to, you know, work with the dialect coach and uh, really make sure it was solid. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But it sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. I had no idea when, you, when I met you outside. I, threw me back for a second. I was like, wait a minute, is she acting right now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, getting back to Olivia, she, um, now, I'm not sure, because I watched the next episode after this. Shame okay. on me. But hey, we didn't <laughs> no, know until, okay. okay. until today. So, um, okay, in this episode, episode six, did she eat the raw meat also over at Linda's place? I think she did, that's right? The next one, oh, that's, right? Yeah, that's, that's the next one. That's the next one. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It's the next yeah. one? Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. I'm with it's you. I, I watched that. the two, too, so I'm a little confused. <laughs> well, I don't want to talk too real. much about yeah. that. But, yeah, there's there's got to be something up with her, you know? Like, we, she goes in there. She There's an ellipse. She comes out. She throws up, right? And I didn't think much of it the first time I watched it. But then, obviously, since I've seen the next episode, I'm like, huh, she, has a, she must have a hankering for me. <laughs> <laughs> So, In more ways than one, we see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah she does. So she calls, she calls Sheriff Sworn, and she ends up saying, like, hey, increase your patrols over here. And then by the end of the episode, we see uh, Roman, and he ends up getting arrested, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and he doesn't compel the cops. He could have easily, right? Which is mm -hmm. what Peter was kind of back there, like, use your weird magic thing. Glamoring your thing. Glamoring yeah. thing. Uh, which I was kind of wondering why he chose not to do that to the cops. I mean, I watched the next episode, too, so I'm trying not to make sure <laughs> yeah. I stay in the right sense of what we know. Uh, but at this point, I'm thinking maybe he, you know, is a teenage boy acting out like they do, you know, like a troublemaker right. with his mom. That's all I could think of at that point. And he was kind of making fun of the police mm -hmm. officers when they were questioning him, too, and just, like, jabbing at him, mm -hmm. uh, at them with all these, just very condescending. Yeah. As as a teenage boy, <laughs> so. Yeah, he was. Um, <laughs> did, uh, did, did any, okay, obviously we all noticed, uh, I kind of want to jump ahead because we're talking about Olivia, Olivia already. Let's talk about her in the library. So mm -hmm. in the library, Christina, you have that scene with her, and yeah. it's such an interesting scene because you, you're there with, with, um, you, you, with your, uh, your character's grandmother, right? Yes. Okay, so you go in there. Oh, and by the way, if I'm like saying your name and your character's <laughs> I name, I am so sorry, Freya. It's fine. Does that happen to you a lot? Um, just with you. <laughs> but it's okay. I'm cool with it. Okay, so, so you end up walking with your grandmother out of the library, and you you make eye contact with Shelley. Okay. Yeah. So what's what's going on with you in that scene? I think that my character really feels for people who are ostracized and you know Shelly she can kind of relate to Christina herself is doesn't really fit in with her peers um, with what's going on in her life and I think Shelly obviously is the same because of her physical um, body and so it's just that when she sees her in the library it's that connection with I understand and I, I feel for you and then obviously when Farmka stares me down there's there's something going on yes there is yeah, yeah. What <laughs> So uh, how how did you so how do you play that scene, Freya? Like how are you like getting into that mindset when you're going through that scene with, with uh, with with seeing Shelley? Because you mm -hmm. know, like you you said, she's like kind of ostracized. Yeah. Like it parallels what your character is. Right. For me, it's just about getting into the character, and, and as soon as I become a character, then uh, immediately I will naturally have those thoughts and feelings that goes with that character. And so when I see Shelley there, it just it all comes and flows. And did you read the books before you started shooting? Or I, the book, I should I say? I did, yeah. I read it okay. twice. All right, so you knew wow. what was happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. See, I'm rereading it, too, and I'm picking up it on It is. It's a stuff. book you have to read twice because yeah. there's a lot of information to digest. There is. Mm -hmm. Just like the mm -hmm. show. 
Yeah. <laughs> but um, can I mention another thing? In the library, when we see the the lady reading this nursery rhyme to the little kids, it, um, the nursery rhyme is actually called One for Sorrow. And, uh, and I did a little research on it. Um, it's about, it was written in like 1780s in Britain, and it's about magpie birds. And there's a superstition that um, it depends on how many, the number of magpipes you see will determine if you have good or bad luck. Oh. Which is interesting because in the book, um, the lady who was reading the story, it was actually Three Little Pigs. So I wonder why they changed that. Hmm. I, don't know. Hmm. I, I have that's no idea. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have researched <laughs> that a little yeah, bit Yeah, and that's our second, second reference to birds, too, because they had the exactly. birds when they were on the, mm -hmm. on the bridge. Bridge. And, and another thing in tonight's episode, we hear uh, when Norman was told that he got the wrong paint color, uh, they needed canary. <laughs> color so that's another reference to it. another bird mm -hmm. thing yeah. very interesting so um as Dark. as christina ends up walking by and I, i'm not sure if your character exits does she exit the scene at that point i do yes okay so then there's the pulsating lights on the kids sneakers in the mm -hmm. library and mm -hmm. olivia starts getting a seizure and she doesn't go out like full-on convulsing but she ends up passing out Right, and mm -hmm. uh, she gets caught by Shelley. Shelley obviously starts to glow at that point, um, and obviously, you know, it's a special circumstance. Probably just—is it because whenever she touches somebody or somebody touches her, that's when she kind of glows? I think glows? it's when she gets emotional too. Yeah. Like it's physical and mm -hmm. emotional. Emotional, and and I think affinity between two uh, humans. I think. Mm. So even though her mother treats her like crap, she she still loves her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Her mom does her dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She does. Can I, can I point out the books that Olivia was flipping through, though? That, um, she I was doing know, a lot of Romany books. Romany right? yeah, studies, books. but I actually paused it, and the three books that I could see was um, Herbal Witchcraft, uh, History of Herbal Medicine, and Gypsy Charms, Herbs, and Fortune Telling. So it kind of makes me think that she was doing research on gypsies and wondering what Roman is up to, perhaps. Hmm. With huh. with Peter, like what they're doing. Yeah, together, or, yeah. You know, Roman with Peter. Yeah, and learning more about Peter because now that Peter, she, she's met Peter, uh, I think she's just studying up on gypsies. Yeah, there's mm. definitely something going on between the Godfrey and the Romantic family. Something kind mm -hmm. of uh, Romeo and Juliet. Like yes, it is. exactly. Yeah. yeah it's like Except it's between two guys who are trying <laughs> to have a friendship. <laughs> yeah. We just want to be bros, mom. <laughs> <laughs> they just want a bromance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trying to bro uh -huh. it out. Yeah. <laughs> so there's so much that, you know, per that's a perfect segue. There's so much jealousy mm -hmm. amongst so many of the characters, right? So Shelly, she even has some jealousy going on. Mm -hmm. She notices that uh, once once her uncle, Norman, comes, he he's comforting Olivia in a way. And obviously we know that they're, they've are they been having an affair for a long time, you mm -hmm. know, off and on for many years. But I, I guess Shelly hasn't noticed it at, uh, up until this point. Mm -hmm. And when he leaves, she ends up like throwing a tantrum upstairs. She's listening to music super loud on her on her headphones. And does she tear a book in half? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. she was freakishly yeah. strong. Because didn't yeah. she slam down to in the whole kind of second story shock yeah. a little bit? It's like, wow, homegirl's yeah. got some mm -hmm. guns on the her. The lights, like, flutter. <laughs> yeah, the and lights stuff. flutter yeah. and stuff. So, I mean, I know that we know that Shelly is special, but now we know that she's also very strong, so. But yeah, that makes sense because she can't speak verbally her emotions, so mm -hmm. she has to uh, show her actions through body language, and I think that compensates for the fact that she can't speak. It does. Mm -hmm. uh, Roman and Norman have a very interesting conversation when they leave, and, uh, you know, on the way home, uh, Norman opportunes and he, he takes advantage that they're they're together alone and they, he starts asking him so hey did do you know who impregnated my daughter by any chance <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he was asking this you know by chance hoping that that Roman would reveal like yeah I did it or something like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean. because there's such you know we, we it's such an ambiguous situation like uh, like Freya what, what do you think how do you think so at, so far up until this point mm -hmm. what do you think of the relationship between Roman and Letha. There's, yeah, there's a very ambiguous kind of relationship there. It's kind of hinted at that there could be something more than just a family relationship. Um, I would say that this far, uh, taking a wild guess, it would be that 
there could be some incest. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Or it could be an angel. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> but, speculated incest. But mm -hmm. during that conversation, though, when he gave, when Roman gave Norman the answers, and he looked at him and he was like, yeah, I, I have no idea who did it. Right, but mm -hmm. like I would definitely tell you, and even though he took a while, like he was hesitant to respond, it seemed like mm -hmm. a genuine hesitation. Like he was just like thinking about it, and it seemed like a really good, genuine conversation. Where it's like, oh, they really are cousins, and that's nothing more to it. <laughs> 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 kind of made me feel bad for thinking that it was anything more, but then I just thought back on everything that <laughs> happened. Like, no, there's still something there. Yeah. He might not have got her pregnant, but he still yeah. he might be wishing he may or may not have <laughs> feelings or jealous that he's not the baby daddy. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah, that might be how it is. And then he, he ends up coming back to, or he goes to Peter's place because he's got like a little suspicion, right? And he sees them there. And then now it's like the it's like a roller coaster that we're on. Seriously, because mm -hmm. we think that okay, they're just cousins. And then we mm -hmm. see them together, at, uh, Peter and Letha outside, and and Roman sees them. He's like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, that's some jealousy there. Definite jealousy. But at the same time, he's like, okay, you're still my bro. I don't really know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> right. you're, you know, maybe you're lying to me, but I, we have to do something. We got to, you know, we got to investigate. We got to mm -hmm. be hardy boys here. Definitely hardy boys. Yeah, so I think that's, that's, was there anything else that you guys want to talk about regarding jealousy stuff? I kind of felt like Christina's friends were a little jealous that she was going on a date and they weren't. And trying to mm -hmm. talk her down and make her feel, mm -hmm. you know, not as pretty or as cute as them. Really? Wow. That's right. I, got, I, got, I got that. I mean, I know what mean girls look like, you know? I'm not saying I am a mean girl. I'm saying that, you know, I was, I, I had some mean girl friends. And so, yeah. you know, just the way they were talking to her, like, oh, you have to do this, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. And I, I really liked how the, um, I always forget the jewelry shop girl's name. Jenny. Jenny. Yeah. I like how she came in and was like, hey, do you not realize how pretty you are? And, you know, talked her back up a little I mm -hmm. think that's the pressure that Christina feels from her peers is that and especially from Alexa and Alyssa is that they want her to be just like them you know mm -hmm. typical girls liking boys and makeup and Christina's just not like that and that's where her uh, emotional struggle comes in and exactly. she's prettier than them, mm. so they're trying to make her feel <laughs> ugly yeah. so that, yeah. you know, she stays a quiet little mouse and she won't <laughs> blossom into the giant <laughs> butterfly swan princess. I just looped all those in together. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Well, it was nice. Jenny said something like, we have enough of those, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, that was a good Okay. Well, you know what we don't have enough of? We need more <laughs> comments. We want more comments. Yes. We want people to check us out on iTunes. And when you go to the iTunes store, go ahead and type into the search bar After Buzz TV, Hemlock Grove. Or you know what? Don't even type in After Buzz TV. Guess what? You type in Hemlock Grove, <laughs> yeah. and we're the first podcast Woo! that comes yeah. up. Awesome. So you guys just I think click we're on us. We're the only one right now. We're, we're the yeah. only one, yeah. yeah. So click on us, listen to us, download us, give us five stars, rate and comment us you know we have our youtube videos up as well and uh, you know we deserve those five stars right mm -hmm. we i think yeah. we're at it yeah we're at it though and you know we're yeah. number three on top 10 we today. are yes yeah. that's right we are and don't forget you guys go ahead and tell a friend because it only takes a minute mm -hmm. right and do we have any comments that we wanted to talk about i think i may have had one um <laughs> but you know what? Oh, you replied to somebody on YouTube, right? Oh, yeah. I forgot your name. I'm sorry, user. But they said they love the podcast. And so I said, thanks for watching. And uh, We had one on iTunes as well when I responded. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> but me too. And I said, thanks so A much for watching. It was like A. Um, oh, A. A. S. A. 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 Sorry, fan person. It was something yeah. like yeah. A. H. S. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, yes. A. H. S., for your comment. We saw it. It said. Um, he or she said because we, they listen to the podcast, mm -hmm. they decided to watch the show. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. That's great. That's yeah. awesome. Anyway, the, our next topic is a juicy one. <laughs> Christina <laughs> ravages her date. Date from hell. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Date from hell. <laughs> yeah, except that it was really good. <laughs> it was really, really good up until up it wasn't. Up until. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was a little different than like kissing them goodbye at the end. You just really went too. <laughs> <laughs> but I liked how it started off as a regular, normal, uh, kind of awkward teenage yeah. date that we're mm -hmm. so used to, and then it completely turns into something really gritty and dark. Mm hmm. Yeah, seriously. It's like you, you guys go to a movie, which is like the typical thing mm -hmm. for 
for uh, for a teenage couple to do, mm -hmm. and uh, we and you guys are so like your characters. Well, you guys are so young, right? Or mm -hmm. Is now was your your uh, the date? I don't even know the date's name. The guy. Tyler. Ty yeah, Tyler. Tyler's okay, the Tyler. character. Okay, that's the okay. Tyler's mm -hmm. the character. So Tyler and Christina. Now, are, is there a big age difference between them two? Yes. Uh, well, Christina's 14, and Tyler, I believe, is 17. Okay, yeah. And in real life, I'm 19, and he's 18. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. And he's, yeah, because he, yeah, he's driving a car, so he's got to be, like, an upper yeah. class yeah. man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, so anyway, you guys can go off to, you're, you're driving, you go you go off to what, the lake area? Uh, yes. And it's probably like make out point in a way, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you end up getting a cherry Coke, and he says it's retro. Uh -huh. And I, I just, I had like a little bit of a bad feeling, because obviously the music starts up, and it starts to feel like, oh, something bad's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I kept feeling like Tyler was probably going to like, take advantage of Christina or something, or mm -hmm. like, or try to rape her. I don't know why. <laughs> just, hey. just It's Hemlock Grove. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> exactly. yeah. That's the only reason why I was thinking about it. <laughs> but he, he ended up being a really nice guy. And, he is. And you're playing with your hair, and uh, uh, Christina's playing with her hair, and she's looking in the mirror, and I was like, is she thinking about her white hairs? Because her, her white hairs have really gotten a lot, like, they've really fuller. been getting fuller yeah. and, mm -hmm. like, just getting in there a lot more. So mm -hmm. what? tell us up to this point, what is Christina thinking with her, like, hair? What's going on with that? Does she know what's happening? Specifically with the hair? Yes. Okay, you know how in episode three she kissed the, the corpse, mm -hmm. the right. girl? Right. Well, after that, there's a lot of stress in her life. Um, and then, you know, that manifests itself in one grey strand and then it spreads across her whole head. You know, mm. and at this stage it's it's a streak. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a, a rogue mm -hmm. streak from the mm -hmm. X-Men a little bit. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly <laughs> what I thought. <laughs> yeah. But um, Christina ends up revealing that she is, she did a dare once at the old steel mill. She yeah. looked into that. Thing. What, what did she call that thing? What, what was that steel thing the called? The Bessemer Converter. Bessemer Converter. Mm -hmm. And it it's, okay, so what, I don't even know what a Bessemer Converter did. Do you know? Yes, it converts iron into steel. Mm -hmm. It converts iron into steel by, mm -hmm. like, superheating it? I'm not sure the it's, science behind it's it. It's like the first process. You, you heat it up before it goes into an open hearth, uh, well, into the open fire before it, um, iron becomes steel. So I feel like there's a lot of symbolism there because the, obviously the name of the episode is called The Crucible. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I knew of the play called The Crucible, but <laughs> I didn't even know that The Crucible was something that you mm -hmm. put, you heat up metals in. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's so, a metal container which metals and other substances are subjected to high temperatures. Exactly. So in this case, not only is, is Christina in the episode talking about um, looking into something that's kind of like a gigantic crucible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but everybody, all the characters, like they're jealous amongst each other. They're they're put into situations where they're being stressed and stressed out, and let's we might as well jump to it. Then mm -hmm. Christina ends up seeing the corpse, uh, Lisa's corpse, right? Yeah. Lisa Willoughby's corpse in place of Tyler, and she ends up freaking out, and. She scratches the hell out of Tyler yeah. all over his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it wasn't just, like, two swipes. No. What was well, it? The skin was on. off. It was... I had to stop watching. <laughs> what was that like to shoot? Because I, I couldn't watch. It was exhausting. I had to scream for, like, <laughs> ten minutes str straight. And it's, like, not like a little girly scream. It's a full-on <laughs> belty scream. And I remember having to do it again in the dress. And I would be like... <gasps> and the director's like, hey, Fred, just go into one more. And I'd be like, okay, ready. And then I'd just go into it. And it was it was so exhausting. Wow. Yeah. That, that's, that was fascinating. So I thought, mm -hmm. all right, after that scene... I was thinking to myself, like, oh, man, she's going to get arrested. <laughs> she, she assaulted him, right? But th th then afterwards, we see that they're at separate ambulances, and you're being like, <laughs> they're, they're putting, like, a blanket around. Uh, they're putting a blanket around Christina. Mm -hmm. And then with Tyler, they're, like, like patching his face up or doing something, like pat making it so that it's, it's sterile and all that. Mm -hmm. But I was surprised that Christina didn't get arrested, but I, I guess it's because... I mean, you can't really blame her. It was the situation that reminded her of episode three. And, uh, and she had a little mm -hmm. panic attack. Exactly, yeah. Um, so will there be a date two for them? Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't think so? Okay. 
But I guess I guess from a law enforcement perspective, see, one side of me wants to say, yeah, she should have gotten arrested. But then again, she's a 14 year old. Yeah, yeah she's, she's not. You know, she was freaking out. She could have explained it that way. I'm sure she did. And Sheriff Sworn is like her yeah. second dad. Yeah, exactly. Right? I think it's a small town. Everyone knows everyone, so they know what she's been going through. Yeah. So mm-hmm. she's been on bit. meds. She's having yeah. a hard time. Basically yeah. on tranquilizers. For, <laughs> yeah, give her for a break. While. <laughs> Now, I actually wanted to ask something about, I think, back in episode three. So she has, uh-huh. or maybe it was episode four, but she has a freak out, right? And they take her to the hospital. I yes. thought I thought I wanted to say that that was part of a dream. But what, did she actually get taken to the hospital? Yeah, no, she actually got taken. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, yeah, she, Christina is really having a hard time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> it was, oh, I wanted to also talk about how the, during the scene where Tyler and Christina are making out, or like pecking or whatever. <laughs> yeah, some awkward, you know. First date kisses yeah, when you're first in, kiss. high, in yeah. high school. It was such an interesting contrast between that scene and then they kept transitioning back and forth. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. With, yeah. Yeah. with uh, Norman and Olivia, yeah. and it's just like adults yeah. who are soiled and sullied by the experiences of life uh-huh. yeah. versus like these two innocent kids who are just barely, you know, getting started. Like, what did you guys think about that scene? I love the way it was cut yeah. together going back and forth. It was like, you know, the innocence versus like the, the not experience. so the experience. <laughs> and it was like, maybe, you know, maybe Norman and Olivia at one point started, you know, where they are. And then it's like uh-huh. the process of them going to older Right. Yeah, I thought about that, too, about the innocence of you guys versus them. And, I mean, I had to admit, like, I think I love Norman and Olivia together, even mm-hmm. though it's wrong. Like, they're hot together. So, <laughs> yeah. like, that's a good scene, uh, you know. Yeah. But I also remember Jr. saying, you know, oh, wait, is it? Oh, I don't know if this is the next episode or not. <laughs> I and think like, it is. Don't, Whatever oh, you say it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what ruined it for me. <laughs> I mean, that's why I was so... I guess I can't say it yet. Yeah. I'll save that for next week. Another Sorry, Another perspective guys. could be is that uh, Fumka's character and, and, and Norman Godfrey are, you know, that's what's expected in society when you grow up. It's man and woman. Whereas mm-hmm. Christina going, in, going into the situation with a boy, it's a little nerve-wracking for her with her um, sexuality and stuff going on there. I wanted to uh, backtrack a little bit to the scene where you're over at the jewelry store. So I think uh, there... Um, with Christina and then her two friends, the girls. Um, and uh, we get to see how small the town really is because Christina's in the jewelry store, right? And you guys are picking stuff out. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we see uh, we see them look across into the candy and ice cream shop. Right. It's mm-hmm. like connected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and right after that, Christina's in the library. So <laughs> yeah. it's like, dude, she's, the town must be so it's all connected. Yeah. tiny. It's like my hometown. <laughs> it's really that oh, yeah, I'm sure my hometown's like that, too. Jeez, man. It's just, it's just so connected. fascinating. Uh-huh. Now, how, how is it working on those sets? Was that more convenient to have it like that? Um, do you mean, I don't think the shops were together. Oh, they weren't? I don't think so. I'm not sure, because I didn't film. Oh, actually... Well, the library was not anywhere in real life near um, the, the, you know, the ice cream place. Mm-hmm. Um, it was filmed on various locations all over the place, but it, they obviously achieved the effect of making it seem like a very small town. Yeah. Very well done. What about Francis and Norman? So what what happened with the conversation there? I didn't get. We got a I lot didn't get all of it. Cryptic but. clues. Uh, mm-hmm. per, pretty much like ideas and the. They're kind of like questions, but then we have some of the answers, but then we still have to figure out some of um, in the future. Uh, uh, let's see. If I could interject, the only one thing that I can remember that I got from it was Francis saw one of the other patients that was being tested with him. He mm-hmm. saw their name, and Norman ends up finding out later, like he, he does some research, mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, this person's body was found. H-R- yeah. yeah, but it, they had uh, a note that said, you know, today I've seen the dragon mm-hmm. was, like, written yeah. somewhere on them, so. He, um, Francis said that there were, like, five different things that he can see when Norman asked him. Oh, yeah. He said a uh, baby in a blood pouch, which we know is Roman because mm-hmm. he was born with a call. Uh, the river glowing red, which is, we find out later that uh, there was a body found in the river, the Allegheny River, that leads into Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania, and we found Hollis Vargas, which is the body with the note 
that said, uh, today I've seen the dragon. And then there was another one, dog hatching out of a black egg. Eek. And um, if you kind of backtrack a little bit, there was the scene with Christina and Tyler. Mm -hmm. And Christina says, um, and we were just talking about the Bessemer, that it looks like a big black egg mm -hmm. um, with, without a, the top to it. So um, there's dog hatching out of a black egg. And mm -hmm. then another one, demon with a crown of light. Uh, and then a needle the size of a sword. So a few things that we have to still figure out. Everything mm -hmm. is hard. Hatching out of an egg, and Christina said that looked like an egg, and she was around it. Maybe Christina's the dog coming out of the egg. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, maybe. dog is in werewolf, maybe? I don't know. Maybe she's <laughs> the var wolf. I don't know. Freya, I wanted to ask you, uh, what... If you were going to use one word to describe this show, or maybe even a sentence, a short sentence, to describe <laughs> the show, what would you say as a tagline or something mm -hmm. for this show? I would say that Hamlet Grove is like a, a, a Dali painting. It's abstract and surreal, and it allows you to um, contribute your own thoughts to it. Yeah. Good one. Wow. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's a really good answer. answer. <laughs> <laughs> and if I was to take that and shorten it down into one word, one I would word. I would say am I would say ambiguous. Oh. What would you say? Because I've been saying that since episode yeah. one. I would say ambiguous as well, or surreal. Yeah. I would yeah. say enigmatic. Mm -hmm. Enigmatic. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's like the whole thing's like a riddle, and we're just getting like little bits of puzzle pieces yeah. and information, mm -hmm. and we have only I think we only have re well. Everybody's really trying to solve the murders and figure mm -hmm. out who's killing these girls, but everybody's getting distracted by their own lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true. Which is pretty cool. It's, it's fascinating. I like it. Yeah. It is fascinating. Um, speaking of the murders, I wanted to talk about um, Peter and Roman going to Lisa's house. Yeah. In this episode and right. meeting Lisa's sister, who creeped yeah. me out. She did. I don't know about yeah. anyone else, but... She was just way too Glad dark her and up. twisted <laughs> for, for my stomach there. I was like, okay, maybe she has something to do. She, you know, basically said she hopes her sister died when she went to that mm -hmm. place to meet the mysterious Yeah, invitation. and it's one thing to be able to, like, have said that to a mm -hmm. sister or something like... And feel in, bad in, about in, it. Yeah, but then to say that now and just be like, oh, yeah, that's what I said and be fine with yeah. it was mm -hmm. pretty disturbing. Yeah. There's some sibling rivalry there because you can see on the bulletin board in Lisa's room that she had all these first place ribbons mm -hmm. and whatnot. And another thing I pointed out, I don't know if you saw this, but on the bulletin board there's this um, flyer that said Gothic Messiah Devils. That's all I could read. And But it's literally placed with all these pamphlets for like ballet and awards it's just so out of place that mm. i found it interesting how that one random thing is in such a um clutter of positive um events mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and roman took Except her underwear like, <laughs> yeah. her that's, bunny. What I, that's what i noticed <laughs> her bunny underwear, her bunny <laughs> underwear. It, that's another little allusion to like alice in wonderland mm -hmm. maybe and rabbit mm -hmm. stuff because uh, i remember freya and i think was it episode two or three when they find so lisa's three. body initially when right. when christina finds a body she's looking into the woods and there's a rabbit hole underneath yeah. a tree right so so many so many metaphors and allusions to other stuff mm -hmm. Don't you don't you love that about this show? I love it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> we also saw um, when they were going through this notebook in Lisa's room that there was drawings of naked women, mm -hmm. and which makes me wonder how did Lisa end up naked in the woods? Because when we find the body, she's naked. So you're saying in mm -hmm. Lisa's room there were uh, naked drawings? Yeah, there was of women. Yeah, in her notebook. Yeah, in the her notebook, notebook. Oh, we yeah. saw drawings of a naked woman. Which is why did Lisa end up naked in the woods? Maybe Lisa's a lesbian. Maybe. Ooh. There was, hey, there are lesbians out there, remember? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the first episode when the teacher and the student yeah. had the lesbian thing going on. Uh huh. So, it's the new age. I mm. wanted to say something way out there, and I feel like. Well, it's and that student got killed too. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know yeah. what? Maybe they're attacking mm. lesbians. Maybe. <laughs> Or Maybe the killer has it in for lesbians. Yeah. They and got then a I wonder why. Political mm -hmm. agenda. Mm -hmm. Then that means that Chasseur is going to be in danger because she's a lesbian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's true. Uh, not, only that's that, but true. She, not only that, but she's the hunter, so she's got double <laughs> yeah. stuff she's against trouble. her. She's got two targets on her back right now. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. So anyway, I, I think that's. Does anybody else have any stuff to add about? But we see the show? invitation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. The sister gives that's Roman right. and Peter the invitation why Lisa went to the Godfrey Castle or Steel mm -hmm. Mill now. But um, the, yeah. it said party of mythic proportions. Fun, fun, fun. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Peter and Roman find the rest of her body when they're exploring around there. And after Peter, after Roman gets arrested, quote unquote, um, and Peter's walking around in there, he finds that room with all the blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. And on the ceiling, yeah. I think it was, it said, our P Peter says at the end of the episode, he just says, Mildre. True. Yeah. And I was trying to look up a meaning of it. I went on so many translation websites, and all and all I got was thousand for mill, but mm -hmm. I couldn't find anything for the last part of what he said. So I was hoping next episode mm -hmm. to find out some more about what that meant. If it was just his Rome, Rome, Roman. I think it was maybe it was just a Roman reaction. curse word. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Found it. I, yeah. I took it in that way, but another thing about the blood smears, it kind of looked like angel wings. I yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to mm -hmm. say, too. And there was so much blood that was smeared all over that There's room. A lot right? of blood. Mm -hmm. okay. Which, if this place has been shut down, the blood had to have come after or since it's been shut down. So I want to know when the police are going to get in there to really start investigating all that because I hope it's not all from the same person. You would think they would though, but I don't think the police of this town are very, are very thorough. Yeah. <laughs> Small town cops. Mm -hmm. But the last person we see walking out of there was Famka. Yeah. That is yeah. true. That's right. And then she threw up bloody looking stuff, so maybe mm -hmm. she has something to do mm -hmm. with the corpse there. The, the lower half of Lisa's body being there. And um, I want to also mention that Peter's in there, right? He's trapped. Didn't he look out and it was a full moon? I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Now, it kind of, obviously we've seen the next episode, you know, just the mm -hmm. next episode. <laughs> Nothing more. Getting part. <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking to myself, at this point when I watched it, I was like, dude, he's going to change there? Like, he's not in a comfortable place. Like, mm -hmm. what if he goes back and he eats that corpse and now, like, he's got, like, the DNA from the girl in him and then, like, if Chasseur, uh -huh. like, if Chasseur goes ahead and, like, interrogates him more, she might find that you know she might find some more evidence on him and who knows or maybe he might get into more trouble being out there instead of in the woods because mm -hmm. maybe he didn't eat because he always says he never turns on a empty stomach so that he isn't the violent eat people type of werewolf so that's what mm -hmm. i was concerned about too i'm like hope he's got it together because that moon looks mighty full. <laughs> and I thought and I thought that Roman did it on purpose to kind of abandon him, like, oh yeah, you wanna shut me up? Well take that, sucker. <laughs> like you know, full moon and you're abandoned here. But we kind of see Roman and Peter's relationship kind of deteriorate a little bit because you can see mm -hmm. there are some trust issues now now that Roman I mean, uh, excuse me, Peter is kinda hanging out with Leith Letha. Roman's getting a little jealous jealous and she's He's like, well, what are you doing with her? You know, so that there's some trust issues going on now. Mm -hmm. So that could be another reason why Roman left him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of disappointed that they're not showing the transformations. I mean, we've seen it already, but, and I, and I guess maybe it's just like the fanboy in me that wants to see <laughs> it again in like a different mm -hmm. position or a different situation, yeah. you know? Um, Freya, like, what did you think of Peter's transformation compared to every other like wolf transformation out there. The first time I saw it, I was just like, wow, that is phenomenal. <laughs> I was just so excited because I think that it really is, in my opinion, the greatest transformation there is. Agreed. Yeah. It, it's, Agreed. We, we talked about it on the, on our previous episodes and it's seriously like he's shedding his skin. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like he's, it's like a, it's, it's almost not like a transformation. It's like, just like a breaking out of your shell. He's like showing his true form, what yeah. he really is. And he doesn't seem like a very violent wolf. No. Mm -mm. No. 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 The no. gentle wolf. No, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, I think that's about it with our stuff. We're, yeah, anything else? JJ? Um, no? Let me check here, but I think. I, I had a little bit. Um, we find out Juliet um, is Yo. the first baby of Olivia oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. JR, mm -hmm. but she died as an infant. That's right, Letha revealed that in the yeah. ice cream shop. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's another little that's juicy tidbit of information, like what? Yeah. Yeah. What happened to that baby? They've uh -huh. had so many problems with their kids. 
Like, just, <laughs> just getting them out of the womb. <laughs> it right. kind of shows they're maybe they're not natural. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're not mm-hmm. natural. And, and maybe that's why, if, if anybody was going to be a suspect at this point, I would say it's Olivia because she, there's so many ellipses with what happens with her. The only time we see her is mostly, when she's alone, that is, is when she's doing her eye drops. Mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like that's it, and we don't know what she's doing the rest of the time, and she's always antagonistic towards everybody. Do you kind of yeah. get that, Freya? Yeah, absolutely. I think she's really trying to suppress everyone around her. And she's she's such a control control freak, like yeah, Marissa she's keeps saying. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, if there's not not much else, let's talk to Freya yeah. more yeah. about your like. We want to talk about your background because mm-hmm. there's like I couldn't find that much on you on really? IMDb. Oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah. we want to we want to get yeah. it out of you now so we can uh-huh. fill it in. Cool. <laughs> so um, how did you get started as an actress? I wanted to be a model. Um, my dad's five four and my mom's five foot and I said you're not gonna be a model basically <laughs> and I said yes I am I'm gonna make sure that I'm six foot <laughs> that didn't happen but um uh I was at this fair where they had this modeling booth set up and uh they took my photo and said we'd love you to be a part of our agency and then um from there I did some workshops acting workshops and then I was like right I love this I want to do this so Very you cool. were um, you were in Australia doing your thing. How did you yeah. How did you end up over here in the states? Um, it's the place to be. Um, the industry industry in Australia is 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 getting bigger, but it's just not as big as it is here. And, and there's more choice and opportunity here, and you have to be where the work is. So basically, for me, it was like right. I'm going to America now. I loved how you said mm-hmm. where the whack. <laughs> <laughs> And your parents were out there, so you, they were telling us that y- your dad is still there and your mom is here with you yeah. as you go through the process. Yeah. So how often does your dad come back and forth? When you uh, guys every six here? months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now you were one of the f- first people to get casted on the show. What was that process like, your auditioning process for the show? It was pretty simple. Um, I went in and read with the casting director, Denise Shemian. Uh, who was brilliant. And then um, I had a callback with Eli and Lee and Mark, I think it was. And then after that, I had to wait w- uh, two weeks, I think it was, until I f- was finally able to find out. And I had I had said during pilot season that I wanted to book a role by my birthday, which is end of March. And I signed the contract for Hemlock Grove on my birthday. Uh, so it's the best birthday present <laughs> ever. <laughs> Can never mm-hmm. talk that as a birthday gift. Yeah. <laughs> like, stop trying. <laughs> so, what made you choose? Now, you, you talked about how your audition uh, went, but how did you just choose? Like, how did you even see that Hemlock Grove was out there? Uh, I mean, really, I wasn't at the stage where I could pick and choose anything. It was just I was auditioning for a lot of stuff, pilots and films, and Hemlock Grove came up, and, and it was just something that had different characters, characters that were out of the ordinary, that didn't follow a certain set formula and you know you get a lot of stuff for my uh, teenage girls my age where it's like oh my god like <laughs> that kind of thing. and Christina's different she's she's not like that at all and um so I was drawn to her for that reason now, now um you guys shoot in Toronto correct yeah. for that what was that like because your character Christina is in throughout all the 13 episodes mm-hmm. so uh, your filming process was pretty long how was that yeah. shooting for so long over in Toronto it was good I love Canada I love Toronto in particularly because uh, it's got great food and I love <laughs> good food <laughs> um, and it's just got great culture and diversity and it's amazing excellent mm-hmm. so far on the series well at least up until uh, episode six what has been your favorite scene to shoot favorite scene i love the date scene <laughs> love the date before scene. or after tearing his face <laughs> off maybe during. <laughs> <laughs> good answer <laughs> uh how many times did you have to kiss lisa's corpse oh i didn't count <laughs> <laughs> what, what was oh, the corpse too many? Made out of? Too many. Um, well, they actually used a, a, a real dead girl, which was a little nerve wracking. <laughs> uh, having to kiss a girl. <laughs> um, and basically, she lay there for hours and hours in the freezing cold. I feel very sorry for her. But, and she had this uh, prosthetic breasts over her. And then, you know, the, 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 the guts down here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. <laughs> was, that your, was that your first on-screen kiss? No. With a dead uh, girl? Was it, yeah, with a girl, yeah. 
One for the history books, folks. <laughs> there you go. Real maggots on the prosthetic body? Um, <laughs> for the close up shot, yes. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. They looked real. Yeah, yeah. they did. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Thank you. <laughs> so, oh, you go ahead. Oh, well, I was just gonna kind of stare off of him like I was. You just recently yes. appeared. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have to because Tiana and I we host Once Upon a Time here. Yeah. Also, your episode just aired a couple days ago, and you mm -hmm. play Wendy. Mm -hmm. What was it like shooting for? For that, uh, it was great. The crew in um, Vancouver for Once Upon a Time are amazing. They're just so friendly, and it's you know over a couple of seasons they've created this really warm family that just in, are so inviting. Um, and it was great. It was just a lot of fun. You know, I was able to uh, be in a harness and fly and do you know some a little bit of stunts. So it was, it was did interesting. you have to um, shoot? Were you shooting both at the same time or? Uh, had you already wrapped no, on him? No, I'd Hemlock. wrapped Hemlock Grove, and then I went to shoot Once Upon a Time, and then after that, I went to shoot a film. Oh, wow. Busy girl. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's your next? Do you have an, something else written mm -hmm. down you want to do by a certain, you uh, know, like, what's your oh, next goal? right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't really talk about them. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, then what other kinds of things would you, you don't have to say a specific, yeah. but what kind of things would you like to do from here? I, I would just love to work with great directors and um, people who are passionate about what they do and um, great material, material and, and just playing a diverse range of characters, not just the same character all the time. I yeah. like that you said that because I know that recently, I mean, there used to be this whole line of, you know, movie actors and TV mm -hmm. actors, yeah. and now the line's kind of getting blurred it's, a little yeah, bit. it is. Um, if we were back in that time, like, would you would you focus more on movies now, or do you want to stay focused on films or do more Netflix type of series mm -hmm. where you're getting them all done? Well, a couple of years ago, I said I didn't want to do TV. Um, I didn't think that the material was as good, and I prefer drama. Mm -hmm. Um... And now I just think that there's so much great TV. You know, it seems that the quality is moving into TV and away from film. And so now I'm totally open to doing TV. There's Breaking Bad. There's great TV shows out there. It's true. Great yeah. actors. I like the thing about Hemlock like, Grove, even though it is a TV series, it feels like a really long movie. It is, yeah. yeah. It's Definitely. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. It's, it's hard, like for this show, for us, it's hard mm -hmm. to stop because I think you know your mom was saying we did a whole marathon. Yeah. And that's how you want to watch <laughs> it because it feels like a movie. You have to just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. And it's just shot so beautifully yeah. that it looks like a movie, yeah. too. Yeah. And you can tell that the budget for all the special effects, mm -hmm. especially, you know, like the body you were kissing with the maggots and everything, yeah. everything looks so yeah. real and it's so good that mm -hmm. it's hard to watch or hard to stop watching. Yeah. Yeah, and even even the environment throughout the, because I've seen the first, uh, all the episodes, but <laughs> I'm not going to spoil anything, but the environment seems to remain the same. Mm -hmm. So it feels like one long, drawn-out story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. Uh, back, I keep go, going back to the corpse. Yeah. <laughs> so you just like the girl on girl action. It's okay. That's why he watches the show. Yeah, you found out that it was a real girl <laughs> under there. Now you're even more intrigued. Go on, Sean. So uh, we talked about this. I think was it last episode or maybe a couple episodes ago. I think it was last episode we spoke about this, but. Christina, she is she's walking in the woods, right? First of all, why she's why is she out there in the woods? It's just so. I think it's just like a way of getting quickly between two places. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shortcut. Good explanation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but she's going into the woods with a soda can, her notebook, and a bag full of condoms. Mm -hmm. What's? Can you tell us like what's up? What's up with that? I think, you know, it's the pressure from her peers. She, she has this idea in her head that it is expected of her to sleep with Tyler. So oh. that's, and I think a part of herself is trying to convince herself to do it as well. Like she, she's not at all into Tyler um, or boys at all. And so it's just a convincing herself that yes, I do like boys and, and, and I'm going to do this to prove a point to myself, hmm. to herself. So, yeah. Yeah. so she bought the condom so that she would bring it home and hang, or bring it over to her <laughs> friends and hang out with them. Like, Oops, I dropped the condoms. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> girls have done weirder things. Wow. Teenage I, girls have done weirder things. That is so crazy. That's, that's a, that is a lot of social pressure. I, I would have yeah. never thought that girls would go through something like that. Especially more, in a, more so in a small town. You know, small town attitude. That's yeah. true. And the thing with the, the character of Christina in the book, you know, she's always doing random different things just to build her life experiences mm -hmm. and stuff. So that, that's another reason why she yeah. bought condoms. Absolutely. 
You mind if I ask a question? Go ahead, Go Steve. Mr. Voice from the booth. <laughs> um, this is this is more of an acting question. I know um, you said you wanted to be a model, and then you mm -hmm. moved towards acting. When you first decided that you really loved acting and really wanted to do it, did you decide to move towards different techniques, like acting techniques or coaching, or did you did anything really draw you in the education-wise and acting? Um, I started out with a small coach in um, Perth who was great, and then I started traveling around uh, Australia a lot just trying to build my craft as much as possible because it's what we, it's, it's really stressed in Australia that we build upon our craft. Um, and I think that acting should really be treated like religion. You choose what you want to believe and discard the rest. And there's a lot of um, bullshit out there about uh, acting. But, um, you know, it's, it's about finding what is true. And um, out here I'm at a great place called the Acting Centre, which is absolutely phenomenal. Thanks. That's great. <laughs> so, uh, JJ, she was asking you a little bit kind of about this earlier, but I kind of want to I want to say, what kind of projects do you have upcoming in the mm -hmm. future that you can tell us about? Yeah, I just filmed uh, a film called Swelter uh, with Jean-Claude Van Damme and Alfred Molina, uh, and that's about a, a group of men who uh, rob a casino in Las Vegas for $10 million, and they all get sent to jail except for one, and one's shot in the head, and he can't remember anything, and he goes to a small town called Baker, which has probably less than 100 people, and the rest get let out of jail 10 years later, and they go looking for him, thinking that he has the $10 million. Mm -hmm. Wow, that so sounds good. fascinating. I want to yeah. watch that right now. <laughs> What's your role in it? I play, uh, well, the guy that got shot in the head, he, he's the uh, sheriff of the town, and I play his stepdaughter, and uh, it's, it's very different. I, I kind of have this uh, sort of Hispanic look about me, and they darken my eyebrows, put on tan, and, and uh, straighten my hair, and uh, yeah, it's different, it's good, it's exciting. When's that expected to be released? I think mid next year. Ooh. And is Jean Claude Van Damme mm -hmm. the the guy who's the sheriff now? He's not. He has a smaller part actually. Oh. He's uh, he's one of the, the the men that go looking for the guy that's shot in the head, uh, but a smaller part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jean Claude Van Damme fans can look forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Very neat. Yeah. Um, so we know you're on Twitter. Mm -hmm. What other mm -hmm. social media are you on where our fans can follow you? I have a Facebook page for uh, called Freya Tingley. Uh, Twitter, Instagram. It, I think. Right on. <laughs> Follow her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give her some followers, guys. <laughs> um, what do you have any other favorite TV shows that that are you are you so busy that you can't watch TV? I honestly I haven't watched a lot of TV. I've seen Breaking Bad parts of some parts of Breaking Bad, which I love, and then I started binge watching Once Upon a Time on Netflix. Yes. yes. Which <laughs> is I've I've fallen in love with that show with the rest of all the onces out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So do you think you'll be back for Once Upon a Time? I hope so. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I hope so. We want to yeah. see Wendy. Yeah. We want to see Wendy some more. Yeah. Woohoo! Well, yeah. anybody else right. have any questions? That's I think that's about me. it. Let's go on to our news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. I got a couple of things. So I tweeted after I watched, obviously, the episode seven <laughs> i tweeted at emily pigford who plays <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah ashley who plays ashley valentine uh -huh. on the show and she's got a very small role uh -huh. um but it was very pivotal in that episode oh my mm -hmm. goodness so i ended up tweeting at her and i just simply said great job on your role in hashtag hemlock grove and she tweeted back at me and she said uh, at Sean Austino, thanks so much. That makes Ash hashtag Ashley Valentine very happy. Thanks for checking out <laughs> hashtag Headlock Grove. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was also looking at uh, Eli Roth's Twitter account. Mm -hmm. You can find him at Eli Roth. And he tweeted, wicked awesome time on at late night. Jimmy with Kevin Krasinski's brother at John Krasinski exclusive hashtag aftershock clip tonight stay up or DVR it so his new movie which is coming out I guess it's coming out later this year I think it's already out it's oh, really it's he's yeah. promoting it um, you can actually yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I heard him on uh, Adam Carolla's podcast actually and you can I think you can download it like right away oh. like you can if you have like iTunes you know, like an Apple TV or something you can just like download it and just just have it and just watch it which is oh. really cool that they're doing that mm. And it's, yeah. you know, it's like we're, we're in that era right yeah. now, just like Hemlock Grove is. Uh -huh. on, it's just like, boom, we're just going to release everything. Yep. And, and it's amazing. I love that. And Eli um, just 
appeared on uh, Jay Leno's Tonight Show last week, oh, cool. and um, it was for promoting Aftershock, but he talked about a little bit about Hemlock Grove, but he got cut off. Kathy Griffin took too much airtime. So, <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> so, but it, it was a good interview. I highly suggest anyone go out and find it. I, thanks, Marissa. Yep. <laughs> I also found uh, Nicole, I don't know how to say her last name, Boyvin? Nicole? Uh, yeah, I think it's Boyvin. Yeah, I, so. yeah, I found her on Twitter, and mm-hmm. she, and if you guys want to follow her, you can follow her at Nicole Boyvin. Boyvin is spelled B-O-I-V-I-N 13, and I was looking at some of her tweets, and there's this one, uh, there's this one picture here, it's kind of small, but bear with me. So this is with her and the guy that plays, uh, that plays Shelly, yeah. Shelly's body. Mm-hmm. So oh, I, yeah. I was like, I, and I've been questioning this the whole time, I've been thinking to myself, so is this like just angles are they just making her look bigger or is it really somebody else no. Be- mm-hmm. yeah so there's really somebody else yeah it's a guy called michael who's a great awesome down-to-earth person and um they used his body and then i think they cgi'd a nicole's face onto his body oh they mm. cgi'd wow. her on there i think okay. so i could be wrong but i think so i want to say in some scenes it was, it was probably like more effect more effective cost effective and cheaper for them yeah. to just sit her down and make her like mm-hmm. have padded shoulders and stuff right. yeah but they did a lot of makeup on mm-hmm. her it looked like oh yeah. yeah but yeah his name is michael andre yes. you can follow him at michael m-i-c-h-a-e-l andre a-n-d-r E A and then another E at the end. Oh, fancy Andre. Yeah, and he, <laughs> he needs some followers. That guy's only got a few, so get, give him some followers after Buzz fans. <laughs> and, and additionally, I liked how she also tweeted Nicole Belvin, she, uh, Boyvin, she also tweeted Glowworm. Oh. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. So that was so funny. I had one of these when I was young. I yeah, still love I those. Too. <laughs> um, and I totally forgot, I didn't even think of yeah. that illusion at all. So that was really, it was cute. Yeah. What, why do you think? Dr. Price calls um, glowworm. Hmm. her glowworm because she glows, yeah. obviously, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. is there another reason behind that? Oh. Freya, any? <laughs> Maybe it's one of the only things that there isn't a reason behind. Maybe it's just a nickname. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just a nickname. Yeah. Everybody likes Shelly so much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's a sweetie. She is a sweetie, mm-hmm. and she's and she's so like Marissa said, she's like so intelligent. Like when she's yeah. typing away at the computer, instant messaging with mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. and it's, it's just so sad that she can't express herself vocally. Yeah, there's a real spirit mm-hmm. there that doesn't really get to come out. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's move on to our predictions. And now. Your After Buzz TV predictions. I've got a couple, and I think I wrote these down after watching the next episode. <laughs> That's why I'm like, where did this I'm, one end? I'm going to try to edit it while I'm saying it. <laughs> okay. okay, so I think that Roman's going to kick Peter's butt because he's hanging out with Letha too much. Mm. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I've already seen it. Yeah, you said I can. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, what about you, I, JJ? I think, this is different from a book, but I think Christina is going to end up being really bad. I think she's bad. Oh, you think mm. she's a bad girl? I do. I think she's going to, I don't know. I just, watching last this time, I thought, I don't know. I think uh, I think she may might be, uh, you know, I don't know that she knows. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that she might have been the Vargal. Mm-hmm. I like that prediction. <laughs> um, my prediction, trying not to say anything at this point, I'm thinking that, um, oh, I wanted to know more about how Juliet died coming out of the or as a baby because we didn't get a lot of answers mm-hmm. from that. So I just had a question for my prediction, like what happened to Juliet? Mm-hmm. And that's fair. Yeah. It's fair to have a question. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's my question. I I feel like at this point, I'm really suspicious of Olivia now, mm-hmm. and I feel like she may be the killer. And not necessarily of our gulf, but because we don't really know what she is. We don't know what her and Roman are. We don't even know if it's a wolf that's killing people, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Freya, mm-hmm. would you like to contribute in some way? <laughs> um, Give us a teaser. How about that? <laughs> hmm. I would say that yes, it, it's uh, a werewolf killer. Um, hmm, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Stop it there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Well, if there's nothing else, um, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Freya, for joining yes, thank us you for in me. studio. Thank you very much. Thanks. And we, we enjoyed the conversation with you discussing Hemlock Grove, mm -hmm. your show, and it's such it was just such a treat to be able to talk with you today. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> and we'd love to have you back, maybe. I'd in, love to be back. In a few <laughs> weeks. Come back anytime. And you, um, you live in LA? I do. Oh, mm -hmm. you're, you're right down the street from us. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, thanks so much, uh, our fans, for joining us. If you guys want to follow any of us, you can follow me at Sean Austin O. You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. Um, I'm at JJ Jurgens and JJJurgens.com. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at TweetT22. And I'm at Freya Tingley. Thanks so much, guys. We'll buzz with you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.